Uh, let's say that I've started a print-on-demand company. I've, I'm, I, I have a... I have different vendors plugged in. I may, I've got some jewelry. I've got some some other things. I'm going. I am trying to go after a niche market, a specific market. Let's say moms or uh, you know p- proud parents, essentially proud parents of of of, of kids. Um, what what are the first steps in your playbook to start creating a brand? Aside from having a strong design or having a strong visual flow, like what what are the actual like tactical steps you need to take in order to start a brand? Right. So the first thing is, um, so I, I kind of like divide it in, in 10 steps. And that's what I'm going to be speaking in, in the event. Uh, because I, I said, like, you know what, I can be talking about this branding stuff all day. But, but we're really like, there needs to be a way to implement all this information. And everything starts, the, the first step that I had um, there is the brainstorm, right? Literally, that, that's, in my opinion, a tactical step. Like getting a document out on Google Drive and literally saying, so what's the concept of my brand? What's the targeting, the exact age range, gender? What are the, and then what I do, a tactical step is a list of a hundred keywords, right? Keywords that describe your brand. So for instance, if what I'm doing is a tropical brand, I'm gonna put stuff like coconuts, sand, rocking chair, hammock, then the food that the avatar eats, maybe salads or fruits. It's just a hundred lists of keywords that describe your brand. And then your designs, like actual product designs, your graphic design on your store, everything, even the content on your Instagram profile, for instance, everything is going to be according to the, those 100 keywords. So those 100 keywords are basically the, it's the, what shapes everything. It's just what describes the, from graphic design to product creation to everything, right? So you need to have a document where you literally say, this is the document that describes everything we will be doing from now on. If you don't have the document, there's, like I told you, it's going to be uh, incongruent. So that's that's going to be the first step. Um, second step, definitely, once you have that, you can have the business name. And the business name needs to be definitely related to the list of keywords. The list of keywords is everything. Even like to, to choose the name, I feel there needs to be congruency. For instance, this brand called SandCloud, right? I don't know if you know, I think they were in Shark Tank. They make seven figures. Okay. It's just the word sandcloud.com. So if you take a look at their brand, they support marine conservation and like, um, you know, like nature and all this stuff. And the word, the, the, the title describes um, the, the concept, right? Sand, cloud, anything in between, we take care of it. It's like the symbolism behind the name. And then getting the, the, the creative director, the creative director uh, is going to be creating proposals for designs and collections. Not so much like, well, designs and, uh, designs and maybe patterns or prints. Like I'm talking about women's fashion for the most part. But these designs and these proposals, you will, you will start seeing if they look good on phone cases, on towels, on um, all these kind of things. And actually, you know what? Uh, is it okay if I show you some samples just to sure. get an idea? Yeah, I'd love to yeah, see. So I have some of them. I actually hit the... Um, I have it over here. I have a ton of samples from my. Uh, so basically, we we order samples of everything, right? So we have this we have this design. If you take a look at this phone case, for instance, this is a proposal, right? It's like uh, kind of like the leaves in a palm tree. Yep, I know those things. Yeah. So then we just said that was the original proposal for the design. But then we started saying, okay, maybe it looks cool in a towel, right? We have a towel over here. Yeah. The same thing, right? So that's how you get started with uh, product development. And this stuff, by the way, is print on demand. It's printful. It's yeah. Super high quality. And, and uh, I have a, my phone. I use one of these on my phone. It's really good. So everything starts with list of keywords, business name creative director, proposals of designs. And um, and then you start doing, like, we have so much stuff. We even have like like sweaters and these are all print on demand. This is like, um, these are like, this is like a graph of the wave patterns in, the, in Costa Rica. Oh, that's like awesome. The, yeah, like the tide and the wave patterns, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, man. And then with products, you can do a lot of stuff like videos, content, ambassadors, influencers. 
once you have your theme, like, and that's, that's something that's one of the things that's super important is the angle. And I think a lot of people, it, it, it's, you, you have to think very carefully about like what your angle actually is and, and how you can address that angle specifically. Like even in my example of like, okay, uh, gifts that mothers are going to buy their daughters is sort of, is the theme of this imaginary store. Uh, that, and, and, but I don't even know if that's enough of an angle, you know, you have, you, you know, you, you, you have this tropical angle, like it really, that seems to be like the theme of the story is like people that want to, uh, you know, experience the tropical vibes or the peace of mind that you get when you're in a tropical location. How, what are some steps you actually took to like, cause not a, like, that's not an interest necessarily that you can throw on Facebook. Like, how did you go out and find the, the people out there who are really into this tropical culture? Yeah, actually, I started realizing uh, this when I, because I, I first, I did a lot of testing on, on uh, dropshipping, right? I, I saw many of my niches were like mermaid, dragonfly, and uh, hippie, bohemian. And I don't mind to say this stuff, honestly, at this point, because like, this is my main focus. Mm -hmm. But when I, when I started going into the bohemian niche, um, I started selling a lot of products that were like beach products, you know, products that you would wear on the beach. And I realized mm -hmm. that this niche is very, they relate this bohemian style to the beach and the tropics for whatever reason. I'm not an expert on bohemians. I just like sold stuff over there. But then I said like, you know what? I started selling like these shirts and beach bags and sandals that they could wear on the beach. And my images had like, like those environments, like tropical. So I just said, I started targeting like bohemian interests and, and hippie interests. And I said like, these people like the beach. You just got to find which audience likes the beach, for instance, in our case. But from there, it doesn't mean that for, for this brand, we have to target bohemians, right? We could perfectly target uh, Hawaii, surfing, snorkeling, sun tanning. Um, so, so yeah, man, it's like, it's like, that's what actually dropshipping got me. Um, apart from money, it got knowledge that yeah. allowed me to make better decisions. So you, I think it's very valuable, the knowledge that you get with dropshipping. You may not be a bohemian expert, but I bet being a Costa Rican, you are a beach expert. I am, yeah. And, and <laughs> I apart you from are. That, uh, yeah, for sure. And apart from that, like even you have to do something that gets you excited, right? Because yeah. since this is a long-term strategy, you have to find something that gets you pumped. So just the fact that, for instance, we were planning a, a photo shoot to go to the beach. Right now it's like rainy, it's horrible, but let's say probably next weekend or so. And just the fact that you can go on the trip to the beach with the photographers and the models, and all that stuff, it's like, like it's cool, right? And uh, it's just something I like. So that's why, that way, uh, that's why I started doing this like tropical style thing, like more, more specific than tropical. You have to be extremely specific. Our brand is not like put out bracelets, they're tropical, right? Mm. But in my opinion, for instance, um, like put out bracelets, it's more like a Cali vibe, right? California mm. vibe. Not so much like a real Costa Rican vibe. Because I, yeah. I, I live here all my life. I know what the roots and traditions and, uh, of the country. So let's say the roots and traditions of the country are reflected on our products. It's, we're not having the Cali vibe, which is totally different. So uh, that's kind of like our inner, inner concept. And uh, it's very easy to create products when you have that clear. Very cool. Uh, here's a, here's a question. You don't have to answer this if it's too specific. But I'm, I'm uh, the beach is such an interesting thing because it's like a it's it's a physical location, but it's also a state of mind. I think for a lot of people, is they they're happy when they're thinking about the beach or when they want to go to the beach. With your targeting and and where your sales generally come from, are they from places like California and Costa Rica and places that have amazing beaches, or do you find that the sales come from all over the place, like people like in the middle of America, for instance, that don't have any coasts near them, but they just they're sort of maybe they have a vacation coming up or they just feel good about buying beach stuff for the summer. Yeah, so it, it's mostly people that have been to the beach before, regardless of the, of where they are, honestly. So. In Cali, there's a lot of like, there's it's kind of like split equally in my opinion because people in Cali, for instance, or in Florida, like since they're already used to the beach, they don't they're not so passionate about wearing stuff because they're already used to it. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like spread through different you know places. People that travel been have been to the beach and they want to be there because they, for instance, someone that lives on the city, they want to maybe wear something on the beach just so they can feel that desire to be there like many many people i see they're they're working offices and they have this huge um this huge wall art of the beach and it 
doesn't mean they live on the beach, but maybe they just want a desire to be there. So it's also that it's also an angle, right? You can even use that as an angle, like, hey, like with the desire to be in the beach, this is the perfect thing for you. Yeah. Right. Or or do you want to or maybe like an angle for people that live over there? So more like equally, honestly. That's interesting. So both, yeah, both people who live the, that's an interesting idea though, that the people in Florida, like they don't need to wear the beach on their shirt because they live the beach, they're from the beach. But, uh, but yeah, so it has a broad appeal regardless of where people are from. That makes sense. Um, yeah, okay. So you, the, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, and then the same thing for the sandals, right? They're like yeah. uh, like beach product because there are open, open shoes. Um, we, we got sales literally from everywhere, like New York, like everywhere. And I was, I was pretty amazed because I was like, like even some cold places, man. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I think it's like desire mostly. Yeah. It's a state of mind. Very cool. Okay. So you gave, you gave us two uh, items I, and I don't think you should give us any more. If you want more of the two items you need to build, uh, to build a brand, the brand building boot camp, as by Se- Sebastian Gomez, you've got to come to Bangkok. It's it's a beach place yeah, as man. well. You've got to come out yeah. to Bangkok. Are you going to be doing anything? So you're coming for our event. It'll be your first time in Thailand. 